the game, you're going to go several times. Uh, you're going to go back to your offices. Uh, but at some point, you won't go anymore. Like, it's really the story that tells you when it's time to go back there or whatnot. And the time that you're in Detroit after that you, you go do something and you discover something new, now you go back to HQ and now it's time for debrief and, and sometimes there are new characters coming in and then the story continues to, to, to evolve and everything. And it's a great way, I think, to get uh, familiar with the characters and, and feel that you're, I mean, you work for Serif uh, Industries, then it needs to to feel that way as well, like going back there and talking with people, people that react to how you play the missions and things like that. So you'll do it a few times uh, in the game, yeah. Now, when we played it, we were told by <coughs> Mary about the, if you stayed in the hub too long, then if you got into the first mission, something quite bad would happen. Mm -hmm. that yeah. But, I mean, have you tried to do stuff like that throughout the game to kind of keep it interesting? I mean, we, we do things like that when it makes sense. In that case, with hostages, it's quite obvious. Uh, sometimes it takes a different, I would say, uh, shape in the sense that there's something that you can do, but there's not m much else that it's t told to you, and you need to figure out by yourself, well, if I try that instead of that, let's see what, what happens. And we, we do it, but we don't do it like every mission because the context is not always uh, good for that. The, 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 the choices that you're making are going to, to f not flesh out, but are going to, uh, to give you the same story as everybody else, but in different ways. Something different might happen to you from the player next to you. So I think uh, depending on how you play out, with, uh, you, you, you decide to, to, to deal with certain situations, the story is going to become more personal to you in, in that respect, like, oh, uh, you talk with one of your friends, that happened to me. Really? Me? It's not that at all. It's something totally different, but for the same story beat type of thing. So I would say in terms of the story, it's a linear story that you, you unravel one layer after another, but the way those things play out is going to be very different from players to players, uh, player to player. And also we're tracking down what you're doing and it's going to have some sort of also an influence towards the ending, uh, ending of the game. So the endings, there's many endings, I take it? There's more than one, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a concern with that kind of angle of more than one ending that maybe, obviously like when you're writing a story, you kind of you build your optimal story and that point from A to B yes. is the best story. Yes. If there's too many endings, are we have any concern that you might be watering down the best story and taking it away from the kind of story overall? The way we did it, I don't think so. Because the way we did it, it comes to a point where um, you have to make an important choice. And at this point, the story is somewhat over. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's kind of, what has to be done is done. And now you have something important to do. And also, looking back at how you played the game, it's going also to shape up a little bit how it plays out. But. I don't think it's, no, it, the, the way we did it, I, I think it's like, it's not separate, but it connects in a very, I would say, cohesive way. I, I'm trying to find words to answer your question without spoiling anything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm skating now. <laughs> we, we made sure that the game can be played with pressing one button. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, we, we have more than one difficulty level, so uh, what is interesting is that we, we split those three levels of difficulty. The first one, the easiest one, it's more about if you want to be told a story. Actually, it's, it's called Tell Me a Story. And, and you, you, if you don't play the game for the challenges, but more for for knowing like, oh, what's going to happen next type of thing. Uh, this mode is for you. The normal mode, it's the one that it's going to be uh, a challenge. Actually, we call it give me a challenge. And, and, and this one, you need to be tactical. You need to, to take care of your ammo, take cover, be smart about how you deal with things and everything. And the last level, it's called give, give, give me the SX. And now it's full hardcore. So I think it's going to be, uh, to, there's going to be something for, for everyone. What is important to me is that you shouldn't 
put barriers that prevent people from getting into your world, into your game, and appreciate what it can offer. Uh, so it's important to make it accessible in terms of it's how you play it. It's not intimidating. You can understand the principles and things like that. But it doesn't mean that you have to remove the complexity. Because I've seen, uh, like, in our game, people are able to play those games. We, we did uh, many play tests in which we had uh, several players from different backgrounds. Some are really shooter players, the other uh, adventure or RPG players type of thing. And it's funny, at first they start to run and try to shoot everything and they get their ass kicked big time. And they're, oh, they do it two, three times. And then suddenly, wait a second, okay, they, they taught me that. Oh, I'll do this. And then now they start to play the game differently. And oh, they find an alternate path. And then they try something. And now there's a new world that opens to them. And they really enjoy it. And they're able to play the game from start to finish without major difficulty at all. It's just at first, you're so used that uh, we, uh, we don't tell you, like, hey, pay attention, that do whatever you want, that in this game it's not like that. It, it surprises you at first. But uh, people that played the game, they got used to it quite uh, uh, quickly and they really appreciated the experience and they told us it felt different and it was great that they had to think and try different things to, to get over the challenges. I think this game is so intriguing and when you start to play in the story and everything that is happening to the main character is, is well done, it's well crafted and the mystery is is built in a way that you want to know to know more. I feel that it's kind of a, a page turner type of game. Say like in a book when you have a page turner you are oh I, go, I need to go to sleep and you go and I think our game like if you, you open your mind and you let your, yourself dig into it this is what it does and therefore if it does it you don't need anything else. It's a game that has a lot of replay value because uh, you'll play it once but as you go and you make some choice you'll see as you go other possibilities and you might go damn I, I didn't look for it or it, it, it might be something cool here or, or whatnot and you say maybe like next time I'll play I'll try this or that and I think that's the kind of game you play it maybe once as a combatant the other one as a stealthy player and maybe one you okay you try to deal with a situation like that the other time you will try the other way and see how the game uh, uh, shift according to that and, and things like that so I think all the replay value and, and sticking to the game is going to go with that on top of the fact that the game itself I think once you're into it, it you don't want to stop it's that kind of game, I feel. So what is your play style? Me, I'm more of a, I'm a more stealthy guy. Like I like to, to take non-lethal weapons and stay from afar. And when I have no choice, when I get close to a guy, I take him down, hide him, I loot everything. <laughs> I try to find all the secrets and I move to the next part of the game. So do you have a favorite organization that you kind of use religiously? I love uh, the X-Revision. I love to see what's lurking on the other side of the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's out in America uh, August 23rd. It's out in Australia and uh, 20, uh, August 25th. And it's out in Europe on August 26th. Super. <laughs> I've been very slow with that because I don't know them by heart. And I was looking at them like, am I? <laughs>